All right, let's focus on the linear circuits. And in this case, we're going to focus on the elements that store energy, the capacitor and the inductor. And we're going to have in mind the equations that govern, govern the current that flows through the capacitor and the voltage that it's across the terminals of the inductor. So for the capacitor, we have the current is equal to the capacitance times the derivative of the voltage. And for the inductor, we know that the voltage is going to be equals to the inductance times the derivative of the current. Knowing these two equations, we know that when we analyze circuits where capacitors and inductors are present, we're going to have differential equations. So let's just step back here and uh, focus on the bird's eye view. And if we have those differential equations, which we call ordinary differential equations, we're interested in finding the solutions for them. And typically in circuits class, there are four ways to address that. The first one is to work in a time domain and find those answers. Another way is to go to the Laplace or the S domain or using phasers and at last Fourier analysis, which is more on a frequency domain. For this set of videos, we're going to focus just on the Laplace or S domain. And when do we use the Laplace or S domain? Well, when your circuits start getting a little bit complicated on the time domain, when uh, they are more than just the first or the second order circuit, we start going to the Laplace domain. We still study the transient response. We still study the force response for the step in, mainly for the step input. We also do the homogeneous or the natural response. And Laplace is also used when you know the initial conditions of your circuit. So the initial voltage on a capacitor or the initial current on an inductor. Laplace can also help you analyze the circuit that way. So the next videos are going to dive in into these Laplace techniques, mainly in the Laplace transform using S domain models. We're going to see Laplace transform examples and we're going to study this partial fraction expansion and also initial and final value theorem. And in order to understand these, we need to also understand the concept of poles and zeros.